So the next thing we're going to talk about is what's called the displacement thickness. So displacement thickness, I'm going to give you the equation, and then we're going to talk about ways to think about it, because it does matter. We call this delta star. That's not the same thing as delta. That's the boundary layer thickness. This is the displacement thickness. Okay, and you're going to see this a lot because it's used a lot in different calculations. But I'm going to go ahead and give you the equation, and we'll go through what it means. Where's the derivation? I'm not going to give you a derivation for this one. Though we kind of will talk about it, so I guess we are pretty much going to drive it. Equation first. So 0, 2y, and then it's 1 minus rho u, I'm getting better at adding the tails, rho e u e. Though I am starting to have my u's look more and more like n's, which is, you know, I'm doing well in one way and then failing in another. Perfect. Okay. So what is this thing and why do we care about it? Well, We can think about it in two ways. So number one is it's simply missing mass flow. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Okay, so if I have some surface, and let's just pretend that there was no, absolutely no, um, boundary layer. Boundary layers didn't exist for whatever reason. So here's my infinitely thin type plate. Well, then I have a big block of air going over this surface. And if I want to, I can take some, you know, control volume. And I can figure out how much mass flow is entering and exiting that control volume. It makes pretty sense. Not too hard. And so if I wanted to write that in a fancy way, well, I could say that my mass flow right here, and I'll say this is mass flow rate with Kind of my mass flow rate with you know no boundary layer. There you go. That's going to be kind of equal to. And let's see here. That would be the integral from zero to some distance times rho e u e dy. Okay, so that looks good. And if we gave ourselves an, so, self an area, we would have an actual mass flow rate. This is kind of like it. Remember that. It's kind of like it. But if we're doing it per unit span, then I guess we're doing fine. I'll just make this a prime. Oop, there you go. So remember, E is at the edge of the boundary layer, which is where we're saying we've reached, you know, more or less our free stream velocity there. Okay, now this is no boundary layer, but that's not realistic. In real life, we have a boundary layer. And so if I have a boundary layer, then when I'm looking at my flow, well, for one, it's going to be moving over this. And so when I look at my control volume yet again, you're going to see that the fast moving air here has been pushed up. And I have slow moving air right here. And so my mass flow rate in the real case, well, I can rewrite that. It's going to look almost the same. Just call it real. Prime. It's equal to the integral from 0 to y. And for this one, I'm just calling it rho and u. This is the real density and the real velocity right there. So. If I wanted to, then I could take the difference between these because I know there's a difference here. My mass flow rate real is less than my mass flow rate with no boundary layer. And so if I was wanting to write that as like an equality there, I could say, okay, well, mass flow rate real minus my mass flow rate with no boundary layer. Oh, my bad mass flow rate no boundary layer minus my mass flow rate real would be equal to my missing mass flow rate. Okay. So I can then kind of write that out if I want to. And 
now say this first part right here, I have an equation for it already, so I'll just write it out as the integral. So that'll be the integral from 0 to y1. This is the integral we had earlier. Times rho e u e. That's the case where I'm saying I have no boundary layer, which is not realistic. Minus the real density and velocity. And that's equal to this m dot. And so how we get to the delta star eventually is we say, well, you know what? This mass flow rate, that's just going to be equal to the density at the edge times the velocity at the edge times this displacement thickness. Like, what is this thickness of air that is now missing? If I'm thinking about it again, it's like if I have this block of air and I have the fast air on top, well, then I have some section here which has been, the fast air is not able to go into because of the displacement thickness. And the thickness of this section, I can't draw my arrows in the right way, that's delta star. Okay, so rearrange this and I eventually get my delta star equation. We had the delta star equation from before. So delta star is simply equal to the integral from zero to y1 of one minus rho u over rho e u e dy. So this is an important detail we're gonna use sometimes and it's just saying how much of that air has been pushed out of the way by the boundary layer and is not necessarily equal to my boundary layer thickness. Okay, so that's one way of thinking about it. The second one is, let's see here. So the second one is simply talking about streamlines. Okay, so this would be the distance. Oh, don't go crazy me. If I rewrite that just to give myself some slightly better handwriting. So distance, there we go, to an external streamline. Now I know that didn't make any lick of sense here, so I'm going to go ahead and show it to you in a drawing and then we'll go through and explain why that is. Okay, so if I have, you know, the not real case, so this is truly inviscid, like absolutely inviscid, then if I have a streamline on the edge of my, like, tube I care about, that's my streamline. It doesn't move. And so I can have some flow going through this. So I'll be at a velocity ue and a density 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 e. However, in the real world, we have viscosity. It's not inviscid, and so I'm going to have to draw that there. It looks good. And what I'm going to see is that because of my boundary layer, that's delta right there, this stream tube I have from earlier is actually going to get shunted up. And it will not get shunted up necessarily at distance delta. So this distance right here that the streamline has moved is this delta star. It's the displacement thickness. That is actually very, very helpful for us because we want to know where our streamlines are. We want to know how they're going to move. If we know where a streamline is, we can actually trace the mass flow rate. We know that the mass flow inside of the streamline is going to be constant. So there's a lot of details that we need to care about. And so this is a little bit more helpful for us. Okay. Now, how do I use this? Well, remember that streamlines are effectively how we define the body of our aircraft. So when we were going a long time ago, we were talking like, you know, Rankine ovals and all that stuff. We would say, well, there is some streamline. Yeah. Oh, let's do it like that. There you go. Some streamline that is the body. Okay? 
And you might say, okay, if I'm modeling my aircraft, I would just pick the streamline that matches the surface. However, we can't really do that because of boundary layers. So what we do instead is we have to figure out an effective body. So like if I have a bullet here shooting off, I have the actual surface. And then from that, I will have an effective body. My shock waves, everything else, it's going to be seeing that effective body, which is larger by the um, displacement thickness. So this is something I have to care about. Now, the larger my craft is, the smaller this displacement thickness is going to have an effect on it. So if I'm talking about a bullet or something, displacement thickness is a sizable portion of that bullet. And so I do have to care about it. Something we can just toss aside. Okay, so that's it for displacement thickness.